Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Stallings. You know me here on YouTube as Marauder X, and as always, I'm your host for Operation Recap, where I take some of the stories from Operainfall.com, and I share them here on YouTube because I'm the resident YouTube guy. It's what I do. Love it. I just love it. Anyway, so this week we have a ton of stuff. I've got one, two, three, four, six links that I'm going to kind of just quickly run through. It is crazy. Most of them are Xenoblade Chronicles X stuff. So there was a ton of Xenoblade news this week. So that's going to be the first story is like most of these links. Uh, four of the six links are Xenoblade Chronicles X material. So uh, just a quick run through. Uh, the first one is a fan translated trailer detailing the quest system. Go check that out. Much props to the people who translated it. Fantastic. I do love fan translated stuff, but that's that's me, and I rave about that all the time. So I'm not going to get into that. But go check it out. It gives a, a pretty good you know idea of the quest system, which you know, interesting, entertaining. So the second bit is the character customization. So how you can create your character: their face, hair, looks, eyes, teeth, ears. Uh, cheekbones, uh, glowing skin. None of this is accurate, by the way. I'm just kind of saying things. Uh, but it does give a good idea of what you can do with the, the character creation and then how changing equipment will actually change your physical appearance. Much like the last Xenoblade game, how you know you had different armor and armor sets for, for people. So, glad to see that's coming back. You know, a lot of people are kind of hit or miss with, you know, a full-on character generation uh, and customization. Uh, some people feel it makes it kind of generic and, you know, ununique because you're not a character. Like, the previous Xenoblade, you were Shulk. You could change your, your outfit based off your equipment, but you were still Shulk. And the world saw you as Shulk. And in games like this, the world may just see you as generic hero. Which, you know... It's it's hit or miss. I can see good and bad in that. Uh, I'm really excited for you know games that allow you to to customize your character, give it a little bit of that that personal touch. So uh, they've got a ton of options for that. So check that out. The next one is the world overview. They have a, a picture of the the world map with some very scenic locations of places like New Los Angeles. Uh, Valley of Oblivion. That sounds like a fantastic place to put a summer home. I'm looking forward to vacationing there. Uh, the Land of White Ash also sounds ridiculously pleasant, doesn't it? Uh, Land of Black Steel. So many places that just scream destination vacation. Anyway, the scenery pictures that they've got for this are gorgeous. Go check those out. And in a lot of the, the Treehouse, uh, Nintendo Treehouse Directs and whatnot, you've seen just the size and scope of this world, so the fact that these areas kind of transition is kind of impressive that you've got such varied locations and then you just kind of wander around and say, this is what it looks like here, and then here, and then here. It's, it's an impressive scale to this world. And the last Xenoblade uh, information is just bunch of updates uh, about New Los Angeles, the quest board, and Blade, which seems to be the, the faction ori uh, orientation of, of the groups. Uh, like, you've got Pathfinder, Co uh, Arms, Land Bank, all these neat little uh, factions, coalitions that you can work with. Uh, just so much information that I really don't even know how to process half of it. It's It's mind-boggling. But so much Xenoblade Chronicles X information, uh, Nintendo is really taking a vastly different approach with this game than with the previous game in terms of we're just going to show content, we are going to hype the crap out of this game. I guess so that you don't have to have, you know, fans get mad at you when you say, oh, well, we're not really interested in localizing this at the moment. Yeah. Uh, next story, not Xenoblade related, uh, huge, massive list of titles coming to the PS3, PS4, and PS Vita in 2015. It is a huge list. Uh, like, just looking for it, you've got titles that are available now and on what platforms, like uh, Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition available on PS3 and PS Vita, Evolve available on PS4, uh, 
Grim Fandango Remastered on PS4 and PS Vita, and then upcoming titles that have confirmed release dates, like The Order 1886 is going to be on PS4 to 2015, uh, Project Cars, PS4 317. 2015, and it just continues on for that for things that are confirmed, and then a ton of things that do not have confirmed release dates that are said to come out this year. Uh, just that list is, I'm scrolling through it now. It is ridiculous. Like, uh, just, I don't even know where to go with it. Uh, Legos Marvel's Avengers, PS4, PS3, and PS Vita, some point this year. Uh, Magicka 2, Metal Slug 3, Shovel Knight's coming out on some uh, PS4, PS3, and Vita way to go to Hot Club Games. So go check that out, see if there's anything coming out on either of those three consoles that you are interested in. See what the release date is, if it's available at the moment. Uh, if not, stay tuned, because we will update that as soon as we can. And the last story is uh, rumors discussing it, a cancelled Metroid 3DS project. Uh, I love hearing about news like this, about things that, you know, were in the works and then got scrapped for whatever reason. Uh, one, one of my favorite stories is the Sonic Extreme on the Sega Saturn. That, you know, impressed me to no end to see just what people came up with and what was scrapped and what made it into other games. Uh, this talks about uh, the, uh, the, the nice people over Unseen 64. Uh, they this is their thing. They talk. They find information on canceled projects and history like that. Of this is canceled project. This is what was taken from this project to other projects, or how the idea was scrapped entirely. Uh, they talk about how it was going to be a 2D esque side scrolling Metroid title, much like the old uh, Super Metroid and Zero Mission type games, but it was going to be done 3D esque. So 3D models, but on a 2D plane. So the kind of 2.5D that everyone talks about. Just the information that they have on it seems really, really interesting. I highly recommend checking that out if you are a fan of Metroid lore uh, or, you know, canceled game projects in general. I really suggest checking out their stuff. It, it is fantastic. So um, if you're curious about the Metroid game that could have been. Uh, so yeah, that's been all of the stories for this week. Like I said, there's a ton of information, and trying to keep all of it in order was really daunting. So um, go check out those stories. All of the links are in the video description. And stay tuned to Opera Rainfall for more news, reviews, previews, and what have you, because we've got a ton of stuff. And stay tuned here on YouTube, because hopefully we'll be having a ton more stuff show up in the near future. You know, not that I'm hinting at anything. So uh, I'll catch you guys for the next recap next week. Till then, later, everyone.